Hello everyone, welcome to an episode on an update on the Creeps project and just a kind of little summary of what the game plan is, some of the hurdles and pitfalls people have been having and how I think this could be uh, resolved. So uh, essentially, um, yeah, so one of the first things uh, I'd like, uh, I've been asked is the um, the the cost to get in so if we look at creeps the on OpenSea, the the pricing is actually quite high to to get in on a creeps budget because everyone thinks uh, you need a genesis to get uh, get a creeps uh, get into the creeps ecosystem but uh, i must say it, the price currently is actually a, a very good price uh, i can easily see it going much higher uh, there's a lot on the roadmap uh, they are executing according to their plan, so it's, it's pretty good. So having said that, um, yeah, not everybody's sitting with 4.25 ETH to, to get in uh, on the Genesis. So here's a couple of ways where we can uh, get in in a, in, a short, in a cheaper option. So one is this collection called Invasion Pass. There you go. Um, so this is a pass that's needed in order to um, collect a 3D version of the creeps. So and that's going to come out very soon. So that's in the season one roadmap. So I'm, I'm guessing probably in the next one or two weeks, there will be an announcement about the creeps invasion pass and the creep uh, 2D in order to get the 3D version. They've not announced any details of what the 3D version is about, but I suspect that's going to be the one that will help us connect to the metaverse and be able to have a 3d uh, kind of avatar that we can use in the metaverse so that version should be quite valuable uh, so the the price of the invasion pass should definitely go up quite a bit uh, I, I would imagine it should easily get up to about one eat or higher okay so this is one one way of getting in uh, so so if i was getting in with with a smaller capital I could buy this, hold on to this, and then when that announcement comes, uh, try to flip it because somebody with a um, uh, with a Genesis will want to buy it. So it's it's very doable. Okay, so that's one option. The next option is the Lumi token. So the Lumi token is what actually creates the kind of ecosystem. So anytime. They also they always have these um, um, mints happening, where you need the Lumi token in order to do the mint. So, as you can see on the graph, the Lumi token is actually quite low right now. Uh, and uh, initially, I was a little bit scared myself that why is it dropping so much? And there's a ton of people kind of dumping stuff all over. Then I looked at everything, like the economy. Uh, is there anything wrong with the economy? Is there anything wrong with the NFT space? But no, all the projects were doing good. Uh, and there's a lot of volume on these projects, uh, which is one of the key elements to see uh, if a project is good or not. And uh, it seemed the economy was doing... Um, uh, yeah, the economy is still pretty pretty solid. So there's no reason for Lumi to go down. Now, usually, uh, if Lumi is used to mint a certain... Uh, kind of a new NFT that they're bringing out, then uh, the demand would go up. But if uh, if no such thing is happening, then the supply is just going to keep on increasing because every day new Lumis are being printed. Okay, so as new Lumis are being printed, uh, the the supply just grows, but there's no demand. So as a result, the price automatically falls. And that's why we can see on the graph, it's been falling for the last couple of days. And, um, but, you know, this is, this is the other kind of potential for somebody trying to get in with a lower uh, amount of money, uh, lower, lower capital for this. Uh, and that would be to actually buy a good supply of Lumi uh, and just hold on to those. And when the new mint comes, for the new product that they announce, usually they announce it on their Discord channel. Uh, then getting in with that um, with that Lumi 
that, that's been purchased. So it's, it's, it's possible to actually buy the Lumi and leave it in your wallet and then transfer it across to the Crips ecosystem. And the way to do that would be like this. So we'd go to Crips. And in here, in the bank, you could withdraw to ERC and you could also deposit to the game. So when I, if I buy some Lumi, it's going to show up here and then I can deposit it to the game and then I'll end up with some Lumi in the game. And then down here, they might announce something new, uh, which I'm going to get into soon. Uh, and then that will require Lumi and that could be purchased there. And it could either, because essentially you're able to mint new tokens without needing to even be on a whitelist. So that, that's the beauty of it. So this is kind of really almost a backdoor because this is on DEX tools, uh, which is like a decentralized exchange. Uh, there's another one called Uniswap, uh, which also has Lumi, uh, but be very careful and make sure the token address is used. So the actual contract address for Lumi is written on the Discord channel on the official links. So always look for that specific token address. Uh, in order to find the right Lumi, because there are other fake, uh, fake versions uh, hanging out, so make sure you find the right one. That's the official one that they use. Uh, so, having said that, yeah, so it's it's possible to pick up these tokens from a decentralized exchange, and then use that to actually uh, uh, purchase future NFTs. And the other option is obviously uh, as demand grows, when a new NFT is launched which could be as early as uh, this coming week. Uh, so the week commencing uh, the 31st of January, uh, then this price is going to go up. So this is exactly what happened here. So a, a new uh, product was launched and then that created demand for Lumi and then the price just went up. So somebody could potentially just hold the Lumi only and then just sell it on, increase their capital as a result, and then use that to buy ETH and then go back to the market to buy something something good. Uh, so, so these kind of uh, drops in price and in the token, I find that as opportunities because the project checks out. There's nothing uh, that that's not been met in terms of roadmap and and their execution. So, I think the it's just FUD that's that's happening. So, uh, these the second part is essentially as as the Lumi price is going down what's happening is people are looking at this and going like, okay, I'm going to buy Genesis creeps and then uh, that that's going to generate a yield. So if you go into the website, the creeps will generate some yield. So if you look here, uh, a creeps will generate say 1500 Lumi per day. So if it's generating 1500, 1500 times six cents is what essentially would be the daily income. Now that's actually not not so bad. So imagine I spend four Ethereum or five Ethereum to buy that. So fifteen hundred times point zero six. That's ninety US dollars a day. Uh, now keep in mind this is not going to be uh, the full amount. So the money that it generates, twenty five percent is kept by the 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 ecosystem if you withdraw it. So that would mean we'll end up getting. Uh, three quarter of that money, so we end up getting sixty seven dollars fifty cents as of current rate per day, so in a month it's going to be about two thousand dollars so a uh, a creeps that's worth four ethereum, which is about what uh ten thousand dollars so twelve thousand dollars at a very very low lumi price is generating two thousand dollars every month. So essentially in six months, it would easily pay off. But it's not going to be $2,000 all the time. More than likely, it's going to go up. So that income is going to actually keep on going up. So uh, my ROI is going to go up pretty pretty easily. So imagine if, you, if we start with, say, I don't know, $1,000, that could be ex expanded pretty quickly because of these ups and downs. So, I mean, without the downs, there's no way for us to get in. So it's actually good that people are dumping and the price is going down so that we can buy in and then uh, when the price goes up, we can we can sell them potentially. And obviously, once you are able to get Genesis, you can actually take part in the game. So uh, that makes a completely different ball game. Now, 
the uh, other thing is the actual NFTs themselves on OpenSea uh, have dropped quite a bit. So this invasion pass was uh, a lot higher, even like a few days ago. So if you look at this, this was selling for about 70, uh, not 0.7 Ethereum, it's, uh, you know, like j just a few days ago. And then it kept dropping and now it's about 38 cents. It was as low as 10 cents at some point, uh, 10, 10 Ethereum, uh, 0.1 Ethereum at some some point so these drops are, are very useful for people uh, who are not in the project to get in at a low entry so um, yeah having said that I think these are the kind of key uh, elements of getting in there's two key elements I've, I've shown here the third uh, so one is the invasion pass two is the is the Lumi token and three is actually being able to mint some new NFTs that they bring out using Lumi uh, now here's the other really cool interesting thing uh, that could potentially be quite useful uh, now we do need to check maybe I would say go into their discord and uh, join their AMAs and ask but I, I do believe you would need a, a genesis in order to collect income from their shapeshifters and the shapeshifters are going to start collecting income from Monday 31st so uh, if we look at the shapeshifters currently so Pips, Shapeshifters, and Mega Shapeshifters. So Mega Shapeshifters are what actually creates the income. So you need to collect about five Shapeshifters in order to get create a Mega Shapeshifter. Uh, and then the Mega Shapeshifter can actually get a portion of the income that the, uh, uh, the, the bribes, the tax generates. So if we look at the pro current price of Mega Shapeshifters and the, then the price of the shapeshifters themselves so there's the shapeshifters so it's going at a price a floor price of 0.37 so imagine if I need to put together a collection of there, there's like a few different variations so they have a few different shapeshifters okay so each of these shapeshifters would actually uh, earn a portion of that total pool uh, and what's happening is on Monday, 31st, in the evening, there's going to be uh, a the first distribution and that or the first kind of bribe distribution. And that's the money that's been collected uh, in tax over the last sort of two, three weeks. So that's going to be a fairly big payday. Uh, and that amount would be spread out evenly between these seven types of shapeshifters. Now, the quantity of shapeshifters are actually different so if you end up getting a bank's uh, shapeshifter it, there's only going to be 500 banks that's going to be splitting uh, the the pool uh, it's not even 500 because there's 500 banks creating 100 mega banks uh, because you need to collect one of each to make five different uh, one of each different types of of the each shapeshifter in order to get the mega uh, and once the mega is there, uh, that can take part in the distributions that are coming out. So definitely it's a great time to actually get a mega. Uh, but having said that, it's uh, it's not going to make any income, uh, as far as I know, uh, if we uh, don't have a genesis. So this, is, this only applies if you have a genesis. So if you look at the rules here, uh, it says pretty clearly here, reptile armory, shapeshifters, there you go. So shapeshifters are the, are the overlords, uh, loyal disciples who keeps order on earth. There are five variations. Uh, collect all five of them and to, and burn them uh, to to get the uh, the mutated version, the mega rare animated NFT of that character. The megas are the only shapeshifters that earn percentage of the bribe from the creeps. There's a limited number of them, uh, so collect them strategically. And uh, this mystery guest is actually Banks. And the reward uh, is mega rare bribe stealing NFTs exchange five for the mega. So it doesn't really tell you actually uh, if you still get the reward as a shape shifter if you don't have the uh, the genesis. Uh, but from what I remember, I do believe you need that. So yeah, it applies if you have if you're <clears throat> in the game already with the Genesis, 
This makes a lot of sense to get shapeshifters because they're going to get a, a certain amount every day. Each time Lumi is brought in and out of the game, the shapeshifters are going to generate an income. So, <clears throat> so the cool thing is uh, we can either go and collect, say, five different versions of, say, Paris Hilton uh, and then convert that into a shapeshifter or we can buy it from the floor. Uh, so if we come to the floor here, uh, as you can see, the floor for shapeshifters, megas, is actually only 1.98. So let's see if we go back here at Trump, which set us about 0.38. And this is about 1.9. So it's about equal. So about 2 ETH gets us a Trump shapeshifter. A, uh, and the next one up is the, so this is the order, the Trump, Cuban, Paris, Elon, uh, Snoop, Gary, and Banks. So the... Um, the Snoop, uh, sorry, the this one, uh, Cuban is actually 0 0.39, and then if we keep looking up, this is an Elon shapeshifter, 0 0.42. That's a pretty good price, 0 0.42, and we have Snoop shapeshifters going at 0 0.47, and what else have we got? Yeah, so we've got these ones mainly. <clears throat> So you could actually filter. So let's see if I wanted a Snoop collection. You could filter here. So there you go, 0 0.47, and then 0 0.65, and so on. So these are the <coughs> collections. And as you can see, uh, and you can actually choose which card. So let's say if I want only four, I can look at all the four prices. So if you just click on buy now, you could see what's for sale. Uh, and there you go, 66 for a 4, a 1 would cost 65, a 3 would cost 74, a 5 would cost 47, a 2 would cost 65, there you go. So these are the prices. <laughs> So these could get us uh, the enough of these, and then so what I was talking about is is these shapeshifters could be bought, and even if I didn't have a uh, mega, that could be flipped because as soon as it starts getting income, the prices are going to go up because then the price is going to be based on the income it's generating. So <clears throat> that's why I think the the current uh, opportunities are also to look at these shapeshifters potentially. Uh, and again, these are not financial advices, so keep in mind, this is purely for entertainment and educational purposes only. Uh, and yeah, so lastly, I would like to show you uh, my own shapeshifter that I'm, uh, I've collected. So I've collected five banks, and uh, right now I'm going to go and try to mint those banks into a mega bank, mega banks. So this was the first screen that we looked at. So this comes from here. So if you go into the website, uh, you click on Mega Shapeshifters. So I intentionally waited till this kind of time now, like this is 1 a.m. in the UTC time zone, uh, and usually gas fees for Ethereum is actually quite cheap at this time. So anywhere from around midnight to 8, 9 a.m. in the morning uh, in, in the UTC time zone, uh, the gas fees are pretty good. So uh, I've intentionally kind of waited a little bit to get the uh, get a better gas, file, gas price. So let's start, try and begin. So if I go to uh, the, the shapeshifters, I can choose which ones I want to mutate. So these are the five, and then let's say mutate. And there you go, it's $47. It was showing about $93 earlier. So let's confirm and let's find out what the mutation looks like. So, um, when the mutation happens, I'm going to show you some other properties of the mutation and that will give you a bit of idea. There you go, so transaction confirmed and that should be now in my uh, in my address. So if I go to my OpenC, I should see the new shapeshifter. Well, it's not here yet, but it should come up soon. I think there will be a notice here somewhere. So I hope I get a nice one. <clears throat> okay, 
let's have a look again. Do, do, do. Not yet. Okay. OpenC is a bit slow in refreshing parts. So that's that's the main kind of issue OpenC does tend to slow things down sometimes. Um, so yeah, um, I've shown three different ways how we can actually get an income, generate an income uh, using uh, or, or kind of start getting into this ecosystem and, and build up. But um, let's try like shift refresh probably. Let's see if that made a difference. Still no. Well, okay. So I could probably look it up on the contract here. Contract interaction. Beyond Block Explorer. Let's have a look what I got. So mint of mega shapeshifter mega to this of one of token ID this. That's the token. So let's see what we got. So token ID 3020. Mutate from all address to this. Uh, info. Okay, there's nothing here. I really hope it shows up because if it doesn't. Okay, it's not going to show up. But you know, you can actually uh, look at these and understand what the uh, transaction is. And then this will actually help you see the uh, version of the shapeshifter uh, that, that you generated. So if I go to this address, I could see in here the actual transaction from to token ID. So there is an option here that lets you see. There you go. That's the that's the shapeshifter. So I think we can now see it. There you go. So content not available. Okay, so if you click on this and you just click the refresh metadata, it will show you the content. And if we look at the details, uh, it's still being minted. So it's like freshly being created, the, the shapeshifter. And yeah, let's have a look what we got. So if we refresh again, uh, yeah, it, it sometimes takes a couple of minutes to, to get. But the cool thing is, um, there's like a few properties of a shapeshifter that I wanted to explain to you. So while it loads it up, the uh, if you look into the shapeshifter, mega shapeshifters, you, what you'll find is here, there's three different main properties, main different three different scores. So like this one is actually a very, very good score, and that's why the price is 4.97, because it's uh, this these ratings, cold-blooded, goes from 1 to 5, and they all go from 1 to 5. So the Lumi thirst is what's going to uh, decide how much Lumi it's it's going to end up collecting. The fear status is probably uh, yeah how, how feared it is and how much of a cold-blooded creeps this is. So in total, you get the disciple, disciple rank which is 4.3 here. So it's actually a pretty good rank, uh, this shapeshifter. So having said that, uh, let's say if we look at one from further down, uh, like really on the floor, and let's say we look at this one, the score for this one is going to be different. So there you go. It, it has less Lumi Thirst, less Fear Status, and uh, uh, number four on the bloodedness so that's actually a good score so but in overall it's actually only 2.7 so this is how you kind of work out the scores so i hope I, I got a good score so let's find out together how good or bad this shape shifter is going to be do, do, do. boom there's my banks shape shifter 3020 that's a nice number so there's only going to be 4000 of those so i got like 3020 version of this so properties Yes, this guy is hungry for Lumi, and he's got a fear status of 3, and a call status of 3, so a disciple rank of 3.3, which is pretty good, you know, banks. And he's also known as banks dollar dollar dollar, uh, mega is 2% banks, so essentially yeah, these are the scores. So that's it, um, so tomorrow he's going to collect a, a, a portion of the pool, and from that point on we should be able to uh, get uh, collect regular bribes from the system. So, thank
thank you very much for listening and yeah i hope to give you another update later on on how the game is going